Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Yeah, everybody, welcome to the weekend edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I am your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody had an amazing, amazing Easter uh, weekend as we had the markets closed on Good Friday. Uh, so it's my first day back with you, although it's been my first day back since Wednesday because I tried to do a live stream on on Thursday and it failed miserably. Uh, so for those of you that are normally watching our daily video, I apologize. I didn't get that one out uh, as I was trying to do the live stream, thought I would try it and I literally tried it on the fly and it didn't work out. But we're here, we're back, we're live, uh, I guess uh, as live as I can be on Sunday night at our weekend edition. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, so typically we want to look at the bigger picture on the weekends. And I, I like to look at, the, I like to use Sunday nights to look at the, the, the bigger picture on kind of what's happening. We're seeing that the S&P 500 had a really strong rally on Thursday, but still not enough to get us a new swing high. Uh, we we kind of chopped around through most of the week last week. We were unable to really put in that new swing high on the hourly chart. We're still below that area here. I kind of feel, especially when you look at this on a four hour, I kind of feel like uh, what we had on Thursday was a telltale sign of of weakness. And if we you know if we drop below uh, this area here. Uh, in the overnight hours, I think there's a good chance that we'll continue to fall. So 26, 29, uh, 2, I think is a, you know, that's a, that's now that's off the four hour chart. So it's a much bigger time period. Uh, but this is the area that I would kind of look at for a potential short if we drop below this area through here. I, I think there's room for it to kind of continue to run down. So keep that as an, as an overnight possible shorting opportunity if you are. As far as the other areas we have in play, uh, you know, we've still got a, a bounce off this area down here that we had talked about uh, last week, and that's exactly what we bounced off of, and we've stayed kind of above it. So I'm going to leave this area in play for now. In the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ has been our weaker market, uh, really led by the weakness of the FANG stocks. Uh, and uh, over the weekend, President Trump came out with another tweet about Amazon, talking about the uh, that they need to pay more taxes and uh, and that they're getting uh, they're getting a, uh, they're getting too good of a deal from the U.S. Postal Service. So uh, whatever that means, that just uh, you know that Amazon is a is a pretty big component when it comes to the Nasdaq, and and the, the weakness in the Nasdaq has really been led by those Fang stocks over the past couple of days. Uh, we've not seen a whole lot of uh, of return to normal. Now I will say on the four hour chart. We did have that long wick down, which signifies a lot of buying. A lot of buyers could, you know, be looking for good value opportunities in some of these FANG stocks. I mean, you look at something like Apple, and Apple actually has, you know, found a bit more support than some of the others. Facebook, uh, you know, Facebook, I thought we might get a bounce off of this area here. I put a tweet on that about, uh, you know, on, on a daily chart later in the week, uh, and we obviously were unable to get a bounce off of that area. Let me get all of this. So I'm hitting the wrong buttons here. Uh, we were unable to get a bounce off of this area. That was the daily uh, level. And I, you know, my question was, do we see that a potential bounce? Price uh, just blew right through. It didn't pay any attention to it at all. Uh, and, and now I think that we could get yet another rollover. My big fear, you know, Facebook not doing so bad. You know, when we look at these Netflix, or these, uh, these technology stocks, the big one that's, that's really right around the corner is Tesla. And uh, I talked about it in my podcast this week, uh, which is, uh, I think, being released tonight or tomorrow. Uh, the, on the podcast, we did a whole segment on Tesla and looking at really what Tesla looked like. But from a fundamental standpoint, take a look at this. Losing 48 cents, losing 58 cents, losing 87 cents. It was losing money back here. Uh, on the one positive quarter that it had, it did rise huge. But look at this. Down $1.33 a share, down two ninety two, dollars down three oh four. If we have another negative earnings quarter, I, I think we could see Tesla drop sub sub 200 pretty quick. So just keep an eye on that. Just uh, be aware of some of the movements that have happened. I mean, it's gone from 389 to 250. So those of you that are that are Tesla lovers and long bulls, just just be aware, just be cautious. Some other markets to look at uh, on some longer term stuff. And and by the way, I, I have had a lot of requests to, to get into individual stocks. Uh, I'm not going to do too many individual stocks in this forum. This forum doesn't really doesn't really lend itself to individual securities. Uh, I will uh, I, I will have a 
you know, a, a different avenue for individual securities kind of going forward. I'm not quite there yet. I'll let you know when that does come around. But I've had a lot of you ask me specifically about options on individual equities, and I'm working on a plan for that uh, coming soon. Crude oil. So looking at crude oil, we have rallied up into what could, I think, be a decent reversal area. So if we get about a third of the way into the, to the level, there's a short if we come back out. If we don't come back out of it, then we're not going to get the short. Now, I will say that this little bit of basing area here makes it a little bit weaker of, a, of an opportunity. So use your own judgment and understand your own risk before getting into something like this. Uh, if you do indeed still like that area, but there's nothing new to add. Gold, uh, nothing really new to add here in the gold uh, gold side of things. We've got a level up here for a potential reversal if price does get there, and then this 1300 an ounce area down in here. There, there was a potential for a reversal right in this area here, unable to hold that level as it kind of just chopped around before falling through. And now we're, we're kind of coming off this pivot, but I feel like this is pretty weak. So if you are so inclined, you may just be willing to take a breakdown short below this area right here as it could move down from there. Let's slide over and take a look at our bonds and uh, currency markets. So in our bond arena, so our bond arena, we had a long, long, long time short set up in bonds, uh, and then it popped right through that short before then kind of coming down and chopping around in there. So now I've got to look much longer term uh, in bonds if I want to find something. And, and bonds have put in a pretty strong bottoming pattern. If I move this out to the daily chart, uh, you will see that we've put in what could be a fair bottoming pattern in bonds, not completely. Uh, but it is giving giving sign a little bit of sign for hope, and that's a and that's that, that's something that a lot of investors have really been looking at is where where are we going to get any of that hope in bonds? We've seen some of those bottoming patterns in the past. Looking at this on a weekly time period, uh, it could just be a rally back up. But we are due for bonds to to give us a rally back up into this region here. This region here is a great short area if we do get a that rally kind of back up. So looking at this on a on a more a more smaller scale looking at our opportunities, I think you might get a decent opportunity for a potential reversal right through this area here um, going forward. I think this area here does lean itself to uh, a a pretty decent opportunity. Let me uh, change the size here just a little bit, shrink that down. Uh, right around that one red candle right there, I think does lead itself to a potential reversal point if price hits here. It may be a fairly quick move, so keep an eye kind of on that area. Looking at the Aussie. So the Aussie, we had our setup in the Aussie. Price hit this level and then was, was unable to hold. Uh, it then continued to fall through. And now it's starting to kind of rally back up. Now we did bust through the level in here and were unable to hold. Uh, this is unfortunately one that because I didn't get a video out, we had talked, I had uh, was on my list to talk about on Thursday because it was such a weak arrival into this area. So sometimes you're going to have levels that just fail. And this is exactly what that was. Uh, it failed simply because we had a very poor uh, poor arrival into that zone and into that area. So I'm going to remove that from our list completely and leave kind of the rest of the things in play. But that one definitely turns out into a losing position. Our Euro trade from this high up here is continuing its march down. So for those of you that are still in that Euro, my guess is you're probably not, as you're not going to hold those things typically over the weekend. Uh, but that Euro trade, uh, you know, still looks like a still looks like a winner winner chicken dinner, and uh, and and still running down nicely. We've we've got a potential reversal point in here. I'm going to leave both of those lines in play. I, I'm I will tell you, I'm tempted to add this area here. Uh, and I personally will look at this when price gets there, but I'm going to look more, I'm going to change my, my setup here. I am not overly confident. Let me just state that. I am not overly confident in this area, but I think it very well could work. So take that with a grain of salt, if you will, but we could get a, a move into here and get short on the reversal coming out of it. Uh, Canadian dollar makes me angry. Uh, and it makes me angry because we gave it the almost fill, but not quite fill. And so I'm still going to leave this area in play. Uh, but because we did the almost fill, but not quite fill, I'm going to change my uh, my coding from a, uh, a straight up entry to more of a confirmation style entry. Those of you that look at the that watch the video every day know that a dashed line means we want price to trade into the level, and we only take the trade as it comes back out of the level. 
A solid line means we can get in as soon as it touches the level. And then a blue line is our breakout style trade. So we've got a couple of different things to look at on one of these. Uh, last but certainly not least, let's take a look at our Great British Pound and our Japanese Yen. We still have a breakout short here on the, on the Great British Pound below this area here. Uh, Japanese Yen, we have not added anything to our, our trade style. I will say that there's a potential in the yen, as I see this kind of, um, you know, we're, we're in this rising area. If I could draw a trend line, we're in this rising area here. And we do have this area here, which is kind of acted as resistance. So I think there's a chance for a breakout move out of this area. So if you want to, if you, if, if you're, if you're, if you uh, are looking for for a trade that you think could be a decent little runner, I think it could easily run up to this region here. Your stop would be below this area down here because it's going to go below the last prior pivot. So that could be one for you if you're if you're allowed to take those in your particular trading style. So, all right, that's all I have for the week. If you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, Chuck at iiefinancial.com is my email address. You can catch me there anytime, uh, and I will do my best to make sure that I get back to you and get as many of your questions answered as I can. Uh, looking at the uh, the ES, like I said, we got a breakdown below this area here. Uh, it's really only rallied up because somebody decided to buy it as, as soon as the uh, as soon as the open and said, "Hey, it wouldn't be so bad if we're down." And then we rallied a few points up off the bottom. But I think it's still going to come down below this area here. And in the overnight hours, you could uh, you could call that a Santa Claus trade, right? Uh, put it on in the overnight and see what happens to it in the morning. So maybe you get a present, maybe you get a lump of coal. All right, everybody. Hope you have a great weekend. And uh, if we have some changes early in the morning tomorrow, I may be back with a morning edition. I may not need to because there may not be enough changes, but we will see you later. Have a great, great day and happy Easter. See you.